Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the volume of a solid of revolution whose cross section forms a washer and not a circle. So here's the cross sections we've already looked at circles, and this time we have a hole in it. So this becomes this washer. All right, so Consider the region R bounded by y equals the square root of x and y equals x squared in the xy plane. We're going to sketch this region in the plane. We're going to sketch the solid obtained when this region is rotated about the x-axis, and we're also going to sketch a cross-section. Then we're going to find the volume of the resulting solid. So here's a sketch of what this looks like in the xy plane, and my region is right here. So next, let's draw what the solid would look like. So here's what the solid would look like. And again, it was rotated this way about the x-axis. Here's our region. Here's our solid. So this is this kind of looks like a sideways bowl, but a bowl that was shaped in a really funky way, almost like someone put a funnel in the middle of it and cut that out to make this really weird bowl with like these thick spots. OK, so now what is a cross section going to look like? So let's sketch our slice, and that would be here. So if we cut this or if we intersected a plane perpendicular to the x-axis, this is what a slice would look like. And the width of the slice is parallel to the x-axis, so that's delta x, which means we're going to use this volume. Um, we're going to represent the volume as the integral of the area of our cross-section with respect to x. So now let's look at our cross-section. So here is our cross section, and I don't really have anything labeled, and I think it might help to add a little bit of color to this. So, so now that this is color coded, we can easily see that the outer radius of this washer is, corresponds to this blue curve on the outside. So my outer radius, which I'll label is R sub out. So R sub out is equal to this blue curve, which is the square root of x. OK, what about the inner radius? So the inner radius is here. And let's label this r in. So r in, again, you can look at this in terms of y. It's equal to this green. So this y value makes our inner radius. But in this case, we're looking at x squared. All right, so now we can use it to find our area. So the area of the outer function with respect to x, and you know my subscripts are getting out of hand, so let's just call this O. So R O and R I, just to make sure my subscripts don't get a little crazy. Okay, so I've quickly just edited the subscripts so they're a little more manageable to write. So the outer area is equal to pi times the outer radius squared which is just pi times the square root of x squared, or x times pi. The inner radius is equal to pi times our i squared, which is equal to pi times x squared, or x to the fourth pi. OK, so now let's go ahead and find the area of this region. So we want the area of the larger outer region, and we want to cut out or subtract the area of the inner region. So our volume form is actually a little more complicated. It's the area of the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle. And this is with respect to x. And then we do have to, of course, consider our limits of integration, which I'm just leaving off at this point. But we can add them now. So our volume is equal to the integral. And remember, x here goes from 0. And take a moment to figure out what intersection point this is. If you said 1, 1, you're correct. So x goes from 0 to 1. And we have pi times x minus x to the fourth dx. So the value of this integral is pi times x squared over 2 minus x to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1. So this becomes pi times 1 half minus 1 fifth. You end up with 3, you end up with 3 pi over 10 units cubed. So this volume can be represented by this integral here. And we find that the volume rotated about the x-axis is 3 pi over 10 units cubed. I hope this video was helpful.